In the instrumentation lab, we have several Micrologix 1100 PLCs connected as PID loop controllers. And I want to shoot a short video here describing how we can set up the calibration for the analog inputs in those controllers. We are currently looking at the HMI display. We can set the set point and output, and we can switch between manual and automatic, set point tracking, high and low alarm points, PID tuning parameters, and all that stuff. But let's say that the analog input calibration were to drift so that 4 milliamps doesn't truly give us the zero end of scale like we expect. Well, we have a provision for adjusting that. So over here in the computer, we're going to log into the uh, program in the PLC itself. So we're going to start up Rockwell RS Logix Micro English. And we're going to go online with one of the PLCs. And again, we go up to the comms menu say who uh, active go online. We're going to select the PLC we want based on the IP address. Again, our convention we're maintaining here is that the last digit of the IP address reflects the junction box that the PLC is found in. So this is uh, the PLC in junction box 8. I'll click OK. I'll create a brand new file because I just want to go online and edit the online parameters. I don't care about saving or modifying or downloading the file. So here, uh, what you see here we have a scale instruction where we take the raw analog input coming in through input channel 0, in this case I colon 1 dot 0. That's the expansion card number 1, slot 1, and channel 0 of that card. And we're taking that analog input right there as a, a digital count value, an integer number, and it's approximately 3120 counts for 4 milliamps and 15,600 counts for 20 milliamps. And that will get scaled to our engineering unit value, in this case a scale of 0 to 10, and also later on in the uh, subroutine of the program, we use those same N720 and N721 parameters here for scaling for the uh, PID instruction itself. So back to the main program, we've set up like this, N720 and N721, these are files, N720 and N721, this is the count value that we expect to see when there's 4 milliamps going in the card. And this is the count value we expect to see when there's 20 milliamps going in the card. Well, let's say the calibration of that card actually shifts, so that when we put in 4 milliamps and 20 milliamps respectively, we don't get exactly these numbers. What we can do is hook up a loop calibrator to the input of the PLC analog card. We can inject those exact milliamp signals, for example, 4.00 milliamps, and then we can read right here on the live value how many counts we actually do get at 4 milliamps then we can update that value. So let's say we do that, and we find out that it's only putting out a count value of 3118 instead of 3120. I can highlight that and just type in 3118, hit the Enter key, and it now accepts that, stores it in the RAM memory of the PLC as my new lower range value for the analog count. Likewise, I can inject a 20 milliamp signal into my analog card, read the count value that pops up. And if that's different from 15,600, I can edit that value here. So let's say we did that and we found it was 15,610. I can just type that in, hit the Enter key, and that's automatically updated. So I can rescale this according to whatever parameters or whatever values I empirically determine that my analog card is drifted to. So I can essentially recalibrate this so that 4 milliamps truly reads out as 0% or low end of scale, and 20 milliamps truly reads out as the high end of scale. Now because these parameters are held in the N720 and N721 registers, they are editable online. I can just change them right like this. I can put this back to 15,600 and hit Enter. I can put this back to 3120 and hit Enter. These are not hard-coded values in the scale parameters. They're simply uh, numerical values contained in the register in the file over here for N7. So I can edit them online. I do not need to save the program. I do not need to download this to the PLC. It's already been updated in the PLC's memory. When I'm done with that, with my calibration, I can simply click the X in the corner, do not save changes, and I'm done. And my PLC uh, now will have a calibrated input based on real empirical measurements of sending 4 and 20 milliamps into the card. So we've done it like that to make it very convenient. So you don't actually have to change any of the hard-coded values in the code of the program. You simply have to edit those parameters as they stand.
So again, very convenient. It makes it easy for a person to set up the Allen Bradley PLC as a loop controller and concentrate on the PID loop control features without having to know much or care about the details of the ladder logic programming.